Hey everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, when we first started RVing in 2014, we had two dogs and a cat with us and our two dogs were seniors. And so they made it to about 2016-ish and then they passed away. And then we recently just adopted a new dog, an Australian Shepherd who has gone with us on a few trips and we thought it would be interesting to take the time in a video and talk about uh, what we do for keeping our pets safe and happy while we're RVing and also maybe a little bit of keeping our sanity while we're RVing with pets um, because sometimes it can be a challenge and it's definitely a little more you have to think about when you're mm -hmm. RVing. So in this video we're just going to talk about what we do and we hope you find it helpful. So this first one, it must be a little bit controversial, although I don't really think it is, but uh, it's buckling in your pet on driving days. And the reason why I say I think it must be controversial is because I see people driving down the road with pets in their laps and on the dash and, you know, just all over the place. And um, the problem with that, though, is the reason why you're buckled in is if there's an accident, you have an abrupt stop and or the vehicle has an abrupt stop, but if you have nothing to hold you, your body still goes flying and can be ejected from the vehicle. Well, the same thing can happen with your pets. They could be ejected from the vehicle or they could be thrown into you. Um, so it's not only a hazard for them, but it's a hazard for you as well. And I know that some people don't do it, buckle their pets in just because they're afraid their pets are gonna be uncomfortable, they're not gonna like it, and it's gonna make a overall miserable travel day for everyone involved. But there are actually a lot of different styles of pet restraints. Yeah, and uh, it, it'll also help you uh, if you're the driver to keep you focused on the road and not worried about your pet jumping on you or jumping in your lap, or even sometimes if the pet is small enough, get down where the pedals are and uh, can really cause problems that way. We use actually a very short uh, seatbelt extension that clips onto Toby's harness and it keeps him in the back and he can still put his head up and look out the window if he wants to. He can lay down, he can sit down, but it does keep him somewhat restrained. But they also have like harnesses that you can put on and it has your pet sitting up the whole time. So whatever your pet prefers, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a good idea to have some sort of restraint uh, for your pet while you're actually driving. And when we had a cat, we actually had our cat would go in her little cat kennel. Um, and obviously you can see from the photo here that we have a fifth wheel. So we're talking about driving in the truck. We always had the pets with us in the truck. Even when we had two dogs, and a cat. Two dogs were buckled in and then the cat was in her kennel in between them and that's what worked best for our family. Um, like I said it's all a personal preference but even if you're in a drivable in a motorhome class C van there are definitely options for that as well. And one last thing on the one I was just reading about like the kind that we have that clips from the seatbelt into the pet's uh, harness, um, harness they say not to do it if they only have a collar. Don't link it to their collar because then it could strangle them if something happens. So, and last final, final thing is the pet restraints not only help for like at the time of the accident, but say after the accident, there's a lot going on. You're trying to find your insurance information maybe, or you might be immobilized and the pet is traumatized from all the activity. There could be police sirens and things going on and they run off. Um, you know, how awful would that be to have an accident and then also lose your pet in the same day? So a pet restraint would also keep the pet from running off. And then the next thing is uh, safety if your pet gets lost. So uh, most people do have their pets chipped and the if your pet runs off, that's great. If they go somewhere that actually has a chip reader. Um, it, it's a, an extra step that whoever finds your pet has to take them to like a kennel or a vet's office that has a chip reader. They can read the chip and see who that pet is registered to. When you're traveling, it's nice to have something that you can update as you go along. So 
if let's say you live in Virginia like we do and you're traveling down to Florida and along the way you're going to make several stops it would be nice to be able to just go online and update where you're at just in case your pet gets away from you and you can uh, when somebody finds them it's easier for them to locate you and so we use a product called pet hub and we recently interviewed them on the beyond the wheel podcast so we'll put a link to that and what this is is a tag that goes on your pet's collar or on their harness and it has a QR code and it also has a website and a phone number. So that's three ways a person can uh, identify that it's your pet. And when they scan the, bar the QR code on the tag, it will bring up information that you allow it. You allow the website to show to someone that finds your pet and it makes it easier for the finder to get in touch with you as the owner. So when they, when they scan it, like for ours, um, it brings up uh, Toby's information. Um, and then it also sends us an email that tells us where our pet is. Like your pet has been found at such and such location. It brings it up on a, like a Google map and you can see where your pet is. Mm -hmm. So that makes it, um, very much easier for to be reunited with your pet. Yeah, and the other thing that we really like about Pet Hub is it's more than just the location aspect. You can also upload all of your pet's medical records. So when you're traveling on the road a lot, like we are, um, and you it, you know something might happen and you have to take your pet to the vet, it's like super easy to be able to just for us to just be able to go in there into the website and to be able to see the pet's records. And if your pet has uh, some type of health problem, like say your dog has diabetes and your pet is lost, well, you can make just that part of their medical history public. So when someone scans it, and what we mean by that is you're just using your smartphone and taking a picture of what looks like a barcode and it pops up this profile and it might say, um, you know, dog has diabetes. If you can't locate the owner, please take to a vet right away or something. And then also if they have anything that's uh, maybe they don't like other dogs or they don't like kids or something, you can have that pop up as well. So we really like Pet Hub. We've been using it for a little while now. And uh, the premium subscription to be able to put all that information in there is only like $24 a year to be a, a premium member. And they also have affiliations with other pet related items such as like dog food and collars mm -hmm. and things. So you get discounts on that as well. So, and it's, it's a very obvious tag that somebody would be able to see when they find your pet. So another safety item is a temperature monitor for your RV. Now, a lot of people think about this when they're boondocking, if they're going to be out boondocking and maybe they're going to leave the RV for a few hours to go hiking or something. Um, or sightseeing and they have to leave the pet behind in the RV and they wanna be able to monitor what that temperature is. But this is also important for campgrounds. I'm a huge Disney fan. And so I'm in a couple of Facebook groups on uh, Disney camping because they actually have a campground at, uh, in Orlando, Fort Wilderness. And just recently, and this is like a very nice campground, right? But just recently they had some power outages it happens. Now imagine if you were out at the parks in Florida, and I'll tell you right now it's May and it's already getting into the 90s there. And so you might only be out for a couple of hours, but the power goes out, you know, it's going to get really hot in there very quickly. That's like leaving your pet in a hot car. So a pet monitor will help, or a temperature monitor um, will help you know what the temperature is. And some of them even come with a camera on them. And what else do they check, Sean? Well, they can also monitor humidity levels to make sure the humidity is not getting too high. And if you get one that is like Wi-Fi capable, you can monitor the temperature on your phone or maybe even your iWatch, I don't know, but on your phone for sure, and it will send you, some of them will send you a text message saying the temperature has exceeded whatever limit you set it at. And so you know you either have to do something right away or 
you can set it low enough to where you have uh, a little bit of time to be able to get back to the RV and, and tend to the needs of your pet and get them out of there or whatever you'd have to do, start the generator. So it's very helpful yeah. um, and really gives you as the owner a peace of mind that your pet is going to be comfortable in that RV when you're when you're not there. Now I guess the one drawback to it is that you have to have some type of signal because you're away and you're trying to monitor it on your phone. You have to have some type of signal. So we've been boondocking in places before where the only reason why we had a signal is because we had a cellular booster that was plugged in. And if you ran out of power for some reason, like if you're boondocking, it's with batteries. If you're in a campground, it might be from the power pedestal. But for whatever reason, if you're out of juice, now that booster's not working, now that functionality is not going to work. So we do know people who have set up an automatic um, trip on their generator which um, if it got too hot in the RV, it would flip over to generator and it would allow an AC to run. The next thing is uh, trip planning. So uh, we always like to take our dogs with us when we have them before and when we have them now, when we have Toby now, we, we want them to be involved in our camping and, and our excursions and seeing the area. It really does help with the socialization of the pet and uh, they're not stuck inside the RV or only seeing the campground when you're out um, on your camping trips. And so one resource that we like to look at is gopetfriendly.com. And we also did an interview with Amy mm -hmm. on the podcast and we'll put a link to that. But they have an extensive website full of information about all different destinations national parks, beaches, mountain mm -hmm. getaways, pet friendly cities, road trips, attractions that you can use as a resource when you're planning your RV trips and uh, make sure that there are things that you can include your pet in while you're out at a different location. And I really feel like the country is getting more and more pet friendly. Recently, we went to a national park service site it was the Appomattox courthouse so it's a historical site and it had like all of these um restored buildings and Toby couldn't go in most of them but he could walk all around we could walk him all around the outside of the whole area where we were reading all the placards and all the history information part of the tour was outside and even when I got to the gift shop Sean was going to stay outside with him and the woman who worked there poked her head out and said, you can bring your dog in. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, pets really love going to new locations. I was just reading something earlier this week that you see your pet always, if you have a dog, he's always sniffing the ground. And when they go to new locations, they really love to do that because it's kind of like their social media. They can read the, the scents from the other dogs. <laughs> And then they normally will lift their leg and put their own message down to add to the to the conversation. So um, the more locations you can take your pet, the the more information he's going to get, and the more news he's going to get, and uh, the happier he's going to be. So so definitely involving your pets in your activities is a good thing. It it keeps them from being cooped up in the RV, and it also um, allows you to to know that your pet is safe and with you. Yeah, and that brings us to the next point about keeping the pet cooped up in the RV. There are some places that are not pet friendly. There's even um, national parks that their trails because of the wildlife are not pet friendly. Some of them are, but not all. So it's always important to check, like we said, when trip planning. And then when you are at the campground and you are making the decision to leave your pet, you know, you kind of need to know your pet and understand um, his or her anxiety level and uh, know maybe how loud it is in the campground. Because let's face it, these RVs aren't like house. When we're in our house and someone walks by, you can't hear it inside. But if we're in a campground, especially a crowded campground or especially one of those like awning to awning <laughs> tight campgrounds, Toby can hear every single sound. And, and he's going to uh, respond to it verbally. And everyone walking by doesn't necessarily want to hear that. 
Um, and, and also another issue is just for his safety. If he's getting anxious, I have seen pictures where dogs have ripped up carpet, ripped up door screens, um, just all different types of things like that because they're very anxious. So you might want to think about not leaving your uh, pet alone in the RV. An example of that is, again, I'll use Disney as an example. They have a great boarding facility, Best Friends Pet Care, where almost everyone I know that goes to Fort Wilderness with a dog in particular is going to um, board him or her at the Best Friends Pet Care. Yeah, we had our, our Dutch Shepherd when uh, she was a retired military working dog, but she got anxious inside the RV when we were gone and we had a toy hauler at the time and she really scratched up the door between the toy hauler por portion and the living portion of the RV because she was so anxious about being in there alone. So it's, it's also a safety thing. You don't want your pet getting hurt because they're uh, really stimulated by the environment and, and can't handle the anxiety. Yeah, and like we mentioned also, they could be just incessantly barking, which is gonna be a distraction to the others. And that brings us into our last point here, which is petiquette. Etiquette for your pets at the campground. So one is obviously being aware of them barking and just being a good neighbor. And uh, reading the rules at the campground. So they, every campground we've ever been to has some type of leash rules and you really need to follow those unless you're in an area that's designated like at KOAs they have the the dog parks that you don't have to keep your pet on a leash when they're within that dog park but everywhere else in the campground you have to keep them on a leash and that's for multiple reasons um, some is people are afraid of pets um, many people still are afraid of dogs and so you don't want to frighten them you don't want to ruin their uh, trip because you had your pet off of a off leash. Um, even though your pet may be good off leash, um, it still creates fear for other people. And then uh, pets are also afraid of other pets mm -hmm. um, and it can cause somebody else's pet to run off or get hurt or you know just have increased anxiety. So you wanna be careful of that. Uh, pets can easily be distracted, uh, particularly if you're in a nature situation and there's a squirrel or a rabbit or even a deer. Your dog may, you know, see that and just take off after it and then you're in for a, a long search uh, to find that pet, particularly if they don't want to listen to you because that rabbit looks so good to get go play with. And then the biggest uh, pet peeve that you'll hear, pet peeve, pun intended, um, that you'll hear people say about campgrounds, especially, is people not picking up their dog poop. And I think the worst that we ever saw, they did pick up their dog poop, they bagged it in those little dog bags, and then they tossed it in the grill. Yeah. I mean, what is wrong with people? pick up your dog poop and put it in the trash. And many campgrounds nowadays have the um, actual receptacle for it. But if they don't, walk the extra few steps to the dumpster, whatever you've got to do. It's part of your responsibility as a pet owner to clean up after your pets. And many of them even provide the bags to pick yeah. it up. So even if you don't have bags with you, there's always some available. And it really does help uh, keep other people from getting dirty shoes or even if they're barefoot walking around stepping in it. So yeah. just clean it up. And then respect the quiet hours. Um, you, you don't wanna leave your dog outside after 10 o'clock for him to bark at every, everything that goes by or every noise that he hears. Um, res respect the quiet hours, not just with people noise, but with pet noise as well. And that actually reminds me when you said leave outside, don't ever leave your dogs outside unattended. They're good escape artists. They sometimes can find a way, but even if they can't, even if you've got your leash like so long that they're not going to be able to leave the campsite, it can really be startling to other people if a dog gets up and lunges, like they might not see that uh, cord that they're attached to and they do have a tendency to bark a little bit more when no one's around 
So being a good neighbor, almost every campground I've seen has a rule against leaving your pet unattended outside like that. But I have also seen people breaking that rule. So yeah. be a good neighbor. And then just uh, lastly, uh, pet keep your pet vaccinated. Um, so if he does get away, um, he, he's not going to get diseases that be, can be prevented or he's not going to transmit a disease to another pet or another person. Um, they have vaccines for just about everything for pets now. I know when we got Toby and took him to the vet, we got him a Lyme disease vaccine and his uh, leptospirosis vaccine, which if you're hiking and you bring your pet with you, if they're sniffing uh, the ground and naturally they're gonna sniff feces and stuff of other animals, um, it keeps them from getting leptospirosis from that. So, um, and then of course it goes without saying the rabies vaccine and the, and the uh, heartworm medication and flea and tick medication to prevent them from getting all those tick-borne diseases as well. So make sure you keep your pet vaccinated when you're traveling um, just to keep them healthy and safe. So hopefully this video was helpful to you and gave you a few ideas of how to take care of your pets. We've talked a lot about dogs, really, because that's what we're traveling right now with. But we do actually have an article on our website uh, from when we had our cat, and it includes things like what to do about the litter box and stuff like that. So we'll put a link to that as well. And let us know what you do. Uh, leave a comment and let us know what you do for your pet to keep them safe and happy and part of the family while you're traveling. And so until we see you on the road, safe, safe travels. travels.